Welcome to the New Discovery Christian Podcast, where you'll find Bible messaging and sermons that will encourage, uplift, and challenge you to a godlier life. Join our community and become inspired to continue living a God-directed life. Welcome again to the New Discovery Podcast. I'm Kyle, your host, and I've got Parker, my co-host today. I've got Kinley, my co-host today, again, and we're coming to you with a biblical Bible podcast today. So we're going to dive in today. If you guys want to follow along with us, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 31, starting in verse 10. So... We're going to go ahead, as we usually do, we're going to read through it, and then afterward, we're going to discuss what we went ahead and read. So if it's okay with you guys, I'll go ahead and take verse 10 through verse 17, and then Parker, how about you take 18 through 24, and then Kinley, can you take 25 to 31 and finish this out? Sure can. All right, cool. All right. So starting in verse 10, a wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like merchant ships, bringing her food from afar She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants a vineyard. She sets about her work with vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. All right, sweet. Um before we get started, uh, we just want to leave a context with all of you guys of all of you guys that are listening in on us or watching us, whichever one that is, or I guess if it's on YouTube, you're listening and watching. So I guess both of those, but so here's our kind of context of why we use this. <clears throat> we just live in a culture right now where there's a lot of argument of what the role of a man or a woman is, or they're just interchangeable right now. And so there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of sometimes anger that goes along with that, a lot of arguments. And we just want to dive right in what the scriptures say. So like we said, we read it and we're just going to talk about it. What does God have to say about uh, the role of a woman? And typically this isn't verbatim. We'll get into that. It's not like you have to do exactly what's being said here, but it, this isn't a book of wins- wisdom. So there's wisdom in here for womanhood. Now we're, we're going over womanhood right now. We'll go into the manhood, uh, some other time. Uh, but for now we're going to start with this one right here today. So we just want to leave that context of where we're coming from with going and diving into this podcast. So I don't know, maybe I'll start it out. The first thing that I noticed is, you know, there's the The gender roles that we talk about in the past, you know, we were just talking about just before we even started today, where you've got the 1950s, that mindset of being at home, being the housewife, looking after your family, uh, and then no job, no career, nothing like that. And so a lot of people today said that's the way it needs to be. It has to be. uh, And because family is so important. 
And then you got the other end. It says, you know, you don't have to be a housewife. You don't have to look over your kids. There's nothing wrong with sending them off to daycare and letting them raise your kids and just focusing on your career. And that's what's most important. And some people on this side will say the other one is lazy. The other one will say you don't care about your family. So typically I've heard both of those. And obviously there's a lot in the middle. Um, but I don't know about you guys, but when I read this, I hear something uh, a bit different when I read this than what either side says. So I don't know. Was there anything that uh, came out to you guys specifically as we're reading through this? There's a couple things that I know that came out to me. Well, it seems to me like you kind of have a mix between those, right? Because on the one hand, um, the virtuous, or as my Bible calls it, the virtuous wife, but, um, you know, she's going out into the marketplace. She's, you know, doing all these things as far as like, you know, career wise, I guess you could say. And then on the other hand, she's preparing food for a household and a portion for her maid servants, is what it says in verse 15. So, so you kind of see, you know, it's not just like one or the other. It's, I think there's, there's a good, like a mix in both. Yeah. I think that's what I see too when I'm reading through here. Um, like, I guess, was there anything that came out to you, Kinley, initially as you're reading through here? Um, I really like the part that I read where it said at the very end that, um, you know, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. You know, he, mm. it says in this verse all throughout it in chapter 31 that, you know, she goes into the marketplace. She does all of these things. Mm. She's respected by her husband or what does it say that she's. Um, her husband trusts her, that she mm. provides for her family. I think, you know, those are all really, really great things. But I also like where it says that charm is deceitful and beauty is mm. vain. Mm -hmm. And it says that a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And I think that everything in this chapter really sets the standard of what um, a God-fearing woman is supposed to look like. And, you know, mm. Every woman is a child of God. How it, and you know that differentiates whether you send your kids off to daycare and you are a working woman, mm. or whether you stay home with your family. And that's what you have a passion for is being at home. You know, all of those women still fit into this. You know, they can still be respected by their husbands. They can still be um, God fearing women. They can still be hardworking. Um, I don't know. That's just kind of what I think about it. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. There's a lot to go off of what you said there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know for me initially, uh, which what you were just saying is I what I hear when I'm reading through here is a woman that makes sure that her family is taken care of. Mm -hmm. that, that seems to be implied in here when she's saying she's working She's working with eager hands, uh, and I think it says it's her arms are strong for her task. Yeah, it yeah. says in verse seventeen. Yeah, for, yeah, verse seventeen, and so I really, I really like that. She's a hard worker, so she's not, she's not lazy. So in any means, so I think that's that that should be said there. Um, no matter what she's doing, she's she's a hard worker. So I really like that. Uh, in verse fifteen, she provides food for her family. Uh, and then it says, let's see, where was the other part I was looking for? I think it says she wakes up early in the morning as well. Yeah, verse 15. Verse 15. Yeah. Hold on. I'm looking at 18 right now. i got so many underlined stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, yeah. verse 22. It says she opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Yeah. yeah. And it seems to be like some type of progression I'm seeing in this. It seems to like start out with her taking care of her family and making sure they're good. And then it seems to like move from that to like what you're saying uh, in verse 20. And then it seems to be like an emphasis of looking out for the poor when it comes to looking out for the needy. And then it starts to mention trade her like trading and stuff like that going on here. So, and then something about her cloth. Um, oh, she's clothed in scarlet. So, I don't know. I start to read. It seems like she makes sure her family's taken care of, and then after that, it's like 
She's going to go out and do some trading. She's going to go out, take care of the needy. Yeah. She So it seems like, I don't know, it's like a dichotomy. I think that there's a lot of traits in this chapter that you can pull out. Mm. You know, you it's not just that she's a stay-at-home wife and mother that takes care of her family, but she's also not just someone who, you know, works all the time. Mm -hmm. You can pull a lot of things out of it. You know that she's ambitious. She's hardworking. Mm. She's also right. nurturing and yeah. compassionate and selfless. Yeah. It's a lot of mm. great things. And notice how all of those focus on her character, not her outward appearance. Yeah, and I think that flies in the face of today's society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with you because um, I like what I like the way it says this in verse thirty. Is charm is deceptive. I like how that. I like how it says that because just from a guy's perspective, you know, like we're both guys, and it can be very deceptive to just look at someone and just because of just beauty and just be like, oh, I've got everything now. Right. And I think that's a deceptive thing guys go down, and I think many yeah. men go down that road of, is I got everything that I want in a wife now because of that. And it's like, I actually know many people go into a marriage like that, and then it's like, I chose the wrong person, wrong personality, say the character wasn't there. Sometimes the faith isn't even there. And then... <laughs> And then it's like, and then the next part is great too, because this is beauty is fl fleeting. So the whole reason you even went into that situation is now fading away, which it does with everyone. It's not just female. Like, I'm sorry, guys, you know, oh, yeah. we're all going to start to fade a bit as time progresses on us. So, so if that's the main focus, it's like, that's not going to last 50 years from now. So if that's the whole reason, that's going to fade away. So it doesn't show her true character. Doesn't show you know, her true character. Her charm and her outward appearance. That's it says in thirty one, her works are gonna praise her in the gates. Mm. Not her charm or not her beauty and her appearance and the way that she dresses, but what she does and her actions and the way that she praises the Lord in her actions, that's mm. what she's gonna be praised for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. If fears the Lord is to be praised, I like that too. So if someone's I guess some guys need to hear that too. She's doing the right thing. She needs to be praised for that. She needs to know that. It seems to be implied here because there's more going on. Now, <clears throat> at the same time, there's nothing wrong with telling your girl that she's good looking. I think she's not going to say no to that, I don't think. <laughs> but let's make sure that what she's doing is also acknowledged as well. I think that's what's being implied here as well. Let her know the things that she does is that it's not just her beauty. It's she's a special person and she has special qualities to her. And she needs I think she needs to know that as well here. I think that's implied in 30. So I think that's really important. Let her know those things. Yeah. And I think it's important to say that, you know, when we're reading about this, we're not just talking to women, but we're mm. also talking to guys saying we're not saying women, this is exactly what you need to be. Mm. You don't stray from this. But we're also like I feel like we're also saying men, if you're. In, if you're seeking a godly woman, if you're seeking uh, your partner, your wife, um, to see you're seeking out a relationship, then these are the standards that you need to kind of. These are your guidelines, mm. you know, or not guidelines. It's like a blueprint, I think. Exactly, because right. you don't, you know, a lot of guys. Like, did you say that a second ago? You were saying that uh, a lot of guys tend to look at that first. Is oh yeah, the appearance charm, <laughs> but. If you really want somebody who's going to be equally yoked with you mm -hmm. spiritually, emotionally, yeah, et cetera, this is a really good way to look at it. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that equally yoked. Like, as a guy, do we honestly think God's going to send us one of his daughters if we're just some slob that's not living right and stuff? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's, you know, I think this is also a call to us um, in the sense that, you know, are we living a life that would be um, worthy of a virtuous wife, if that makes sense? I think um, the book of Proverbs here is laid out like that, I think, in a way where I always say, actually, my favorite chapter of Proverbs actually is 31, and this is actually my favorite. And why it is and why I think it's such a great bookend is because all the way up to here, they're being called or titled, it's like a father to a son, 
all the way coming up to this chapter where it's like a father telling a son wise things of how to be a man. Now, obviously, a lot of those things can apply to women as well. Oh, yeah. But that's the way it's labeled. And I like that because it's like you're preparing the man to be the man that he needs to be in his own character. And then it leads up to this epilogue, this ending here, where it's like the man is being prepared for almost like this type of woman, I almost feel like. And then it's kind of like, because I think it says, it's somewhere in here, it says, oh, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, verse 10, a, a wife of noble character who can find. I think this is preparing you to be the type of person to attract this type of woman. Mm -hmm. And it takes, a, and I think, you know, Proverbs is, you know, kind of big and it's kind of preparing you for that moment because this isn't, this 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 woman this type of woman isn't around every corner i think and um someone who's pursuing this so you need to have your character straightened up as well before because she's not gonna like you said she's not gonna be attracted to some slob like you right. know just not just like a dirty person but you know someone who's not doing anything with their life with their character it's yeah. like all over the place she's gonna be like uh you know my standards are higher than that. I'm not just going to go with just any dude. or And this is obviously pointing towards marriage because it says the wife of noble character. So we need to keep that in context, too. This is kind of like you're attracting someone for the long haul, that character. Because um, even says beauty is fleeting if it's just only talking about like. Now, obviously, there's principles in dating here, you know, obviously. But it's talking about, you know, when you snatch up the person for the long haul, um, you know, it even says at the end, I think this emphasizes that, you know, the beauty is going to be fleeting. So I think it's emphasizing the long haul here and who you're going to find oh, yeah. for that. Um, and we won't go into it this time, but there's this is the woman we need to be seeking because when it comes, the charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. That's also kind of like a hyperlink to earlier in the book of Proverbs about the wayward woman. Yeah. And so the wayward woman. That's and that's a trap for men is trying to get into that type of relationship because it's purely beauty, it's deceptive. I'm just gonna say the context what it is. It's obviously a sexual relationship. There's no way around it. if you read that section of Proverbs. That's a trap for men to get involved in that. That short term instant gratification type of relationship. And it seems like Proverbs is emphasizing don't seek that out. Instant gratification type of relationships work on your character, work for the long term, the long haul, and then you'll work towards getting that wife of noble character as well involved in your life. Right. I kind of I see it evolving early on because the wayward woman is very early on in Proverbs, if I'm not wrong. I think it's like... Yeah, it's like it's, yeah, one of the first three chapters, I think. Yeah, I, maybe. I think so. I, I actually can't remember. But yeah, it's real early. Um, but one thing you talked about, getting your character straight... Right, because we can't fix our character on our own. We gotta, we we need help with that. So I think yeah, one chapter thing, seven, yeah, the oh wayward or adulterous woman, whichever was it, chapter seven, yeah, chapter seven, okay, and it repeats a couple different times too. So, yeah, yeah, but what are you saying? Um, but what I was saying, you you mentioned getting your character straight. Uh, for, and this is of course this applies to both uh, men and women, but since we're talking about the virtuous wife, uh, the only way that we can, I say we is in obviously I'm not a woman, but. Um, well, these days, I mean, you could be Art Parker, so. Well, <laughs> teach their own, I guess, yeah. apparently. I don't know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, can, yeah, you got me on can, that one. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, I ran into that in a uh, in a discussion online with the class and stuff anyways. We were discussing that earlier. Yeah. About their, <laughs> anyways, that's, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but my point was that. It's like comedic, comedic relief, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, how do we, I guess the question is, well, how do we obtain these uh, these virtuous traits? And it's through the renewal of the Holy Spirit, right? So, the mm -hmm. you know, the fruits of the Spirit, um, which I forget which book that's in. Um, but basically, my, my point here is to kind of, you know, connect it to Jesus in a sense, is if you want to become this virtuous, virtuous, I can't say it, noble wife, we'll say. Yeah. Um, Lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah, because I can't talk. Um you know, it's through Christ that's done. Mm. Is that, is that kind of making sense where I'm coming from? Yeah. I don't know if I stated it right, but um, because we can't fix our character on our own, that's why we needed him to begin with. Yeah, you're right. Because, I mean, this book, even in itself, is like God. I, 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 
I've heard it described as God's wisdom is in alignment with reality. So oh, yeah. when you're reading through these wisdom books, you're aligning with God's reality and God's wisdom. Not saying the other books don't, but they're predominantly focused on that in the world. And they're very specific with different things where this Proverbs is a lot of principles, for instance. And Ecclesiastes is like, well, here's some wisdom when the principles fall apart and involved in that here and Job like hey when you're when you're being oppressed or you're going through suffering and you're in dark times and the principles break down you're not necessarily confused but you're suffering here's the wisdom involved in that part of your life in that that sector so and this is just one section of that where God is specifically in principle like we talk about like a blueprint that's a good way of saying Proverbs, the blueprint for your life. Now, obviously, when you get to the nitty gritty details, sometimes blueprints need to be changed. There's some gray areas. We need to make some adjustments depending on maybe where our culture is, things like that. Who's my partner? Um, Who am I? You know, you need to make those few adjustments as well, because it's obviously this is, you know, not like like here's a good context. It talks about her trading is profitable. Does a woman have to go do trading necessarily? Not, not necessarily. That's not what it's getting at. That wouldn't, because that's a that would have been probably more of a cultural thing. So you mean all these Christian women don't have to do the Avon and Mary Kay? And all right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I and I I know some uh, women that are stay at home moms, and they do a lot of cooking and things like that. Uh, when it comes to cakes, even here at our church, they do a lot of cakes, a lot of pastries, and things like that, and they're selling it. And I think they're they're hyper aligned with this right there. Um. And so that's awesome. Like they're they're on a roll, and that's there's nothing. They should keep doing what they're doing, in my right. opinion. Um, and they love doing it. Uh, but this isn't this isn't saying you have to like go do that. Yeah. I think. Um, I, I think it's a principle of she's taking care of her family, but she's willing to go do other things. She's willing to do that. And uh, what that is, I mean, I can't. I mean, as long as it's scriptural, I mean, as long as you're not doing something that's like unscriptural uh, right. and, you know, just fill your mind with your imagination because, you know, of those things. But, uh, yeah, she's she's a hard worker as well. So uh, she she also gives to the poor, like we talked about as well. So she's doing other things that are involved in this. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think we did a pretty good job through this. Is there anything else that you guys really saw involved in here uh, to talk about? I want to say one more thing, mm. um, just because it really on my heart. Um, I've heard so many of my like guy friends or um, guys that I've grown up with that started getting into like relationship or seeking out a relationship and even friends of mine or mentors of mine that are older than me that were seeking out, um, like you said, like a noble wife. And so there are so many times where I've heard lately, especially, and I don't know if it's just like a God thing that Mm -hmm. that would be around the time that we were talking about this, but I've just heard so many of my guy friends say lately, I just want this girl that's going to love me and that's going to be with me and that and guys that I've grown up with in church if that makes sense like Mm -hmm. where I'm going with this saying I just can't get a girlfriend I just can't stay in a relationship I want this girl I want this girl and chasing after that Mm -hmm. um and there's been so many times where I've said back like you know you're gonna find somebody like God has that perfect counterpart for you and you're ready for that and like but that's not what you need to chase after what you Mm -hmm. need to chase after is God Like Mm -hmm. once you're, once you're running that race and once you're chasing after the right things, he's going to give you what your heart desires. It says that Mm -hmm. somewhere else we, but guys, like, Mm. please listen to this, read this. And when you're thinking, oh, I want this girlfriend, I want this wife, I want this perfect partner and stuff, pray on this. Mm -hmm. Like, don't pray. This sounds so stupid. I know it does. Don't pray for that Instagram influencer model. Please don't. That's not realistic. <laughs> Even if you got her, I don't think it'd go well for you. I think you're getting the charm is deceptive and beauty that's is fleeting with that's that. That's what I'm bud. saying, you know, because that's not what you need to pray for. You don't need to pray for somebody who's charming, who's beautiful, who looks good beside you, who's going to get you a lot of attention that makes other guys jealous. What you need to pray for is Proverbs 31. You know, 
that I just I can't speak that enough that mm. often we really pray for the things that we want instead of what we need. Mm. It's really, really easy to do that. And so for any guy out there thinking, oh, I just want this girl and et cetera, you know, this is where you can find that. But pray on that instead of praying for, you know, I want a relationship. I want something that lasts. I want something that looks good to other people. Pray for a woman who fears the Lord not for someone charming or just beautiful or, you know? Yeah, that makes, makes sense. sense to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong. And I I think, we, I mean, we talked about this in certain podcasts that are slightly controversial. Um, if they are charming and beautiful, nothing necessarily wrong with that. Oh, yeah. But this is this is pulling it back. It's, it's pulling you back when you're all excited. It's like, all right, let me let me pull you back off your chair, bud, while you're all excited. Um that's cool, but that's not going to last. So there better be more going on there. I feel like this is what's curbing that a little bit. It's like you're in for the short term. God's like, I, I want you to think long term because that's not going to last. Yeah. You know, that's not going to be for the long term for you. So you need to look for these qualities. I don't like how you emphasize prayer because uh, anytime I go over this or I'm talking about manhood with even men, it's. Are you praying for that person? And sometimes I get snickers and stuff like that. Oh, I pray for that person. It's like, yeah, but if 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 you're faithful, if you're really seeking that right person, you're not looking. If you're if you're truly not looking for the flee, you know, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, then there shouldn't be a problem with you praying about it. Then, if you truly are, so I feel like that's putting it in. That's putting your faith and what you believe into action at that point mm -hmm. with the prayer. Anything, if you're not involving prayer, I don't think you're taking action towards what you want. If that's what you say that you actually want, you need to, you need to act towards that. And I think mm -hmm. prayer, like you're saying, that's, I think that's where it starts right there is with yeah. the prayer. That, that must be in place as a cornerstone too. And then that puts you in a mode too where how can I attract this person? How can I see that person? And then I think like we were mentioning, that's, that's where that enters in because we're specifically talking about men looking for that woman. You know, you need to start diving into Proverbs. Um, I, I can't say this enough. And especially when we, we can dive into it more when we get into manhood, men don't chase women, chase meaning and purpose in your life. And God is obviously involved in meaning and person pur purpose involved in your life. And when you do that, you will find this person as well. That, that will be the end result of it. Don't chase women because that'll be like, I couldn't say it better myself. It'd be like a dude chasing these Instagram, what do they call them? Influencers or something? Models, influencers. Yeah, it, it will be like that. And uh, I'm just going to, okay, hold on. I don't want to say I'm not, what those guys are. <laughs> I'm not saying that those women are bad. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that just because they're confident or because they're putting themselves out there that they are not you know, mm. good women, good, respectable women, you know, but I'm saying don't align your heart with charm and beauty and, you know, cause that's all in vain. It says it right there. It's, you know, if it, if that woman is beautiful and charming, that's great. Mm. You know, those aren't bad things yeah. like you said, but that's not going to work out long term. God's going to give you what you need, not mm -hmm. what you want. Right. And when it comes to, well, I guess explaining the whole Instagram thing, it's all visual. Like, let's, yeah. let's be honest here. Like you don't know someone's character from there. You may think, you know, that person, but you don't know. And I think that's, that's where the charm it's deceptive. I think in verse 30, it's deceptive. If you think, you know, and some of, some of, some people, when I see comments, like they act like they know them. And I'm like, you can't tell who somebody is through their bio and their Instagram no. or their captions on their pictures. Yeah. And you're assuming what they post on Instagram is like how their daily life looks mm -hmm. like. You don't, and you don't truly know someone until you know what when they're suffering. And when you share that and you talk to them, that's when you truly – no one's going to put when they suffer on Instagram. Let's just be honest. That's not going to happen. So you don't really know them. And so that – we just got to be careful of that, guys. Don't don't be chasing girls on Instagram. That's not going to pan out too well for you. <laughs> You're just going to – there's a certain word for it. Um, I guess I don't know what we're like simping or something like that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It doesn't, it's not good. Don't do it. Um, work on yourself, seek excellence, 
pray for your woman, I think I think that's going to put you on the right road, I think. Yeah. So. And boys, I'm like I'm not just trying to call out the dudes here. I'm really not. I'm like I'm not just saying, "Hey guys, this is what your next girlfriend look, needs to look like. This mm-hmm. is exactly what your wife needs to look like." I also want to say, ladies, it's not bad to be these things. Mm-hmm. You know, we all women often wake up and we look in the mirror and where that's what we focus on because that mm. tends to be, you know, in today's culture, in today's society, it's really, really easy to only focus on appearance. I think everybody can agree on that. Mm. But like, I'm not just talking to guys. We aren't either. Like girls, it's not a bad thing to be hardworking or to be selfless or to be, you know, to not care about your looks so much. I mean, obviously. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Take care of yourself. Right. But these aren't bad traits to live by. Mm. You know, it's not, girls can also prey on this, you know, to be, to grow more and more every day in their character and to look more and more like a godly woman. You know, you're never going to stop growing into who God wants you to be. So boys don't just pray for this woman to come into your life when, it's time for you, but ladies also pray that you can be the type of woman that is deserving, you know, equally of a godly man. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be these things. These principles are a good thing to look at. I think one thing, um, as we've been talking, that that I remember is there was um, in the past it was a girlfriend of mine that I remember as soon as we talked. Uh, and remind, she's she's a very smart person. She's intelligent. She's hardworking. Um, I mean, just made fantastic grades, and all of that was awesome. And but I remember one thing too is I asked her what was most important if you know you got married. Like what what would you try to focus on? She said, you know, there's certain things I like to do. Like I would like to do nursing and a lot of things, and that's what she was doing in in her school, and and she was good at it good grade. She was already doing it already. And when it comes to like nursing homes and things like that already, and she loved and enjoyed doing it, posted on Instagram. But she also said, one thing I want to do for sure is I want to make sure that my family is taken care of. That's very important that that happens no matter what happens with what I enjoy and I'm working. And she said, I would like to take some time off when I first get married to make sure those kids are taken care of. And, you know, I want to do things like nursing and things like that. Um, but that's, that's as long as the family's taken care of, I feel, she said, I have to make sure that's done first and then move out. And, um, you know, obviously there's more details in that and, you know, we didn't get married or anything like that. And, but I just remember in that conversation, something felt right to me as a man hearing that. And that's kind of what I hear in, in, in this is it's like, there's something in me that she said that feels right for a long-term relationship when she said that. And I don't know, I'll just leave that for anyone else to listen to that as well. Um, that I feel like afterwards that that's something I really want to find in a wife is something like that. Obviously in a relationship, the details matters to different people, but that is a blueprint. I think that's the right word felt right to me when it comes to the relationship I felt like. So I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. Anything else you wanted to say, Parker? No, nah, I think y'all just did a great job covering all my thoughts. <laughs> like I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. I was like, oh, yeah. I yeah. was like, I was like, I know I talked a lot too, Kenley. I was like, sorry. Yeah, I want to make, I want to make sure you had another opportunity. No, it was. I mean, if I'm gonna say one more thing, it would just be to, you know, you can find all these character traits through Christ. So, all right, all I, I think that's a good way to end it right there. All right, all right. Thank you for joining in today. When it comes to this podcast, as we tried to do our best when it comes to diving into the God scripture, God's wisdom, his blueprint when it comes to the role, just, I mean, what does it say? The wife of noble character and what, what's just wise about that. And and this is coming from God. So hopefully you guys got something out of this when it comes to this blueprint. I think I've gotten something out of this when it just comes to the discussion that I've had uh, here about this. I don't know if I've ever had a solid discussion like I did today about this specifically. So this felt good. And maybe it feels good to you too, going through this discussion, which is very divisive in our culture today. Um, and by the way, 
you know, we're Christians here. That's the perspective we're coming from. And so we're not telling you what you need to do, especially if you're not a Christian. This is the authority of Scripture. But if you are a Christian, this is the authority of Scripture and that, you know, we literally just read Scripture and just kind of talked about it. So hopefully that will help you in knowing God's perspective on this topic and what God thinks. So because I know it certainly helps me at least. So and if you like this podcast, just remember, uh, you know, likes always help us. Uh, if you want to comment, hey, you know, I don't know everything. Maybe you got a story or something you want to put at the bottom. And, you know, I, I would love to hear that and what you guys think as well and how you want to add to this topic. So until next time, though, we'll see you.